we're going to dye. What? No. Okay. We're gonna cook some meals and then use the food scraps and ingredients from those meals to DIY some beautiful natural colors. What an exciting day! I did something! I made a thing! Hi guys and welcome back to the Sorry Girls. My name is Kelsey and welcome to the channel where we DIY, we do room makeovers, we have fun, and today we're gonna do couple of those things. We're gonna DIY and we're gonna have some fun. This is a video I've been wanting to film for so long. I personally wanted to try natural dyeing and I haven't gotten around to it, but today is the day. We're gonna dive in, guys. I've done a lot of research and I'm ready for this. So today's video is gonna be a little bit of a twist because I'm actually going to be making some meals and with the foods that I make those meals out of, we're gonna be naturally DIY with them. So it is breakfast time and I basically eat one thing for breakfast. I love it. So I will do an oatmeal with oat milk and I'll either do some blueberries on it or I was doing peaches during peach season. And right now I have neither of those but I do have frozen blackberries. So that's what we're gonna use. Now I'm weird and I like to have different textures when I'm eating. So if I was using fresh, I would probably just sprinkle my berries on top. But since we're using frozen, I'm actually going to heat up my berries and kind of do like a little like compote uh, that I can then drizzle and add to the side of my oatmeal. And I usually wouldn't eat yogurt for breakfast, but I already have some Greek yogurt for a recipe for later. Uh, so I'm gonna add that to my breakfast oatmeal bowl just so that I can eat it up and it doesn't go bad. And then of course I'm adding even more texture, which is like granola flakes and any kind of nuts that I have, like almonds. So let's talk a little bit about today's video. So today I'm gonna to be making all of my meals, saving the food scraps so that I can use them in my DIY process. For this meal, the item that we're going to use for the natural dye is the blackberry. I've only seen a couple people use blackberry, so I'm interested to see how it turns out. It's probably not the color you think it's gonna be. I'm just gonna say that. I don't even know what color it's gonna be. I haven't done this yet. But the other ones are really cool because it's actually food scraps. Today I'm also going to be prepping the fabric to receive the dye. I'll explain a little bit more on that later, but what we're actually dyeing is face masks. I bought these ones online a while ago with the intention of naturally dyeing them. And I'm really excited to give it a try and I'm super excited because these are small things to start with. I feel like this is an easy, way to get into natural dyeing. I also have this pink mask that a family friend made for me and I think I would reach for it a little more often if it wasn't as pink. So I'm gonna try dyeing this one as well. Now I've done a lot of research on how to natural dye. It seems like there's a million different ways to do it. There's no right way or wrong way. There's easy ways, there's hard ways. And I think I've figured out the like easiest, but also like it's actually gonna last you a little while, way to naturally dye something. So that's the process we're gonna be tackling today, is my accumulative research way. And I've never tried it before, so we're doing this together. I'll make sure to link the YouTube videos down below that I watched, but I'm gonna give a special shout out to Billy New. She has videos on naturally dyeing, they're beautifully made, I loved watching them, so I've taken some inspiration from there, but I'm gonna finish this breakfast, and after breakfast, we're gonna get started prepping our fabric slash the masks by scouring them and mordanting them. Those are fancy words that I learned this week. So now that breakfast is done, let's talk fabric and move on to prepping our fabric. So, what I have here are cotton masks. This is considered a cellulose fiber, which is cotton, linen, hemp. There's also protein fibers, which is like silk, wool, kind of like stuff that would come from an animal. This is stuff that would come from a plant. So I'm gonna be dying with cotton today. And the way you treat them is a little bit differently. Something that's a protein fiber is actually going to take the dye a little bit easier than say a cotton or linen. And synthetic, like polyester, any of those other fabrics, like forget about it. You're not dyeing those. You can't. <laughs> can't naturally dye at least. So we're sticking to some natural fabrics today, specifically cellulose. So to prep our fabric, we're gonna need to do two things. First up, scour. This means that you need to wash them if you haven't already. Mine are fresh out of the washer. And then I'm going to actually boil them for a couple of hours so that it removes absolutely any kind of grime, oils, anything that would stop the fabric from taking on dye. So in a large pot of water, I'm bringing it to a boil with my masks inside and I'm gonna let this simmer for two hours. 
So it's been almost two hours and before I take off my scoured masks, I'm going to make them a soy bath. So we're gonna give them a soy milk bath because you want your fabric to be as like adherent as possible to the dye. So like I said, the protein fibers are really good at taking on dye, cellulose fibers a little less so. So to make them a little bit more like protein fibers, we're going to use a mordant or mordant them. So this isn't a true mordant because a mordant, I believe, is a chemical reaction and we're doing this the natural way. So normally you'd use like some kind of chemical or like alum, aluminum. I've seen people use all different types of things, but I was trying to watch the natural video, so that's why we're doing it the natural way. So it's not a technical mordant, it's more a binder. Either way, we're gonna use this step so the dye sticks to our masks, okay? So I'm going to be filling up my mini sink here with one part soy milk and five parts water, a one to five ratio. Maybe I'll do like full cup, a full cup of soy milk and then five cups of water. And then just carefully remove them from the boiling pot into the soy milk bath. So I have my soy milk bath here ready. I add a little bit more soy milk and a little bit more water just so that the masks were covered. And I'm gonna leave this for 24 hours. It's gonna soak and hopefully my masks will be a little bit more adherent to the dye. Now that that's done, set, ready, fabric is prepped. We can go ahead and start lunch. I'm hungry. For lunch, I'm really excited. I'm making a, what is it technically called? Mango, salsa, cabbage, and avocado, and spicy yogurt. Oh, got it. That's why I bought the yogurt, was for this. I will put this recipe in the description in case you guys wanna make it. It's like a shrimp taco, essentially. So I'm, I'm just gonna get started. I love cilantro. First up is making the mango salsa salad. Next up, it calls for an onion. So while my shrimp cooks over there, I'm going to move on to the next step in the recipe, which is cutting up the cabbage. And guys, exciting announcement. Red cabbage is one of the food scraps that we're gonna be DIYing with. In my research, this one is probably the mo one I'm most excited for. Not only is it really good at adhering to the fabric, but there's like a fun magic experiment. It involves pH balances. Okay, and then the other ingredient in this recipe that I'm gonna be DIY dying with is avocado. So I can't believe that you can use avocado skins to DIY. And it doesn't come out green, it comes out a beautiful like blushy mauve color, hopefully. So I am going to obviously use the avocado for the recipe, but I'm going to freeze the skins and the pit to use in my dye. So the avocado skins are gonna go in the freezer while the rest of this cabbage just goes in the fridge until tomorrow. Now I guess since this is a what I eat in the day, let's talk about an afternoon snack. I pretty much always have one because I eat my lunch basically at noon. <laughs> and although sometimes an afternoon snack might be carrots and hummus, um, my other favorite afternoon snack is Miss Vicky salt and vinegar chips. Very specific about this one. A hack I have is to put them into a bowl so that you don't eat the entire bag. And it's finally dinner time. So for dinner, we are going to be making my favorite meal, potentially, and that is the kitchen sink pasta. Honestly, for this, all you need is a can of roasted diced tomatoes and a pasta of your choosing, and then the rest, we just make up as we go. So I started by chopping up the garlic and the onion, which is super exciting because this is our dye ingredient of the meal. I can't believe that these papery onion skins are going to give us a beautiful golden yellow color. Mm -hmm. 
And then we're gonna pour our can of tomatoes back in. I actually added an extra can because I thought my ratios were a little off. And then I just open up my spice drawer and I find literally any spices I wanna add. So we're going to do some crushed red pepper. We're gonna do, of course, lots of basil, some thyme, and um, garlic powder because I love garlic. And Italians don't come for me. Like, obviously, this is not a proper tomato sauce. I don't know, I just make it up and it tastes good. And this is why it's called a kitchen sink pasta because I also open up my fridge and see what we got going on in here. Definitely should put some cheese. Capers, I like capers. Olives, capers and olives, let's go for it. I literally almost forgot salt and pepper. Rookie. Okay, so we've officially made all of our meals. We have all of our fruit scraps to DIY with tomorrow. Our soy bath is <laughs> soaking. Later, I'll definitely break into my peanut M&Ms. If I didn't have those, I'd probably do like peaches and cinnamon or I'd find something sweet because I just have to, but that's all for me. See you tomorrow. dying day and I'm so excited to get started. We need to rinse out our soy milk masks or fabric that has been chilling, but here's the tea. In my research, not only are you potentially supposed to soak it, soak it in soy milk, like three times, but you're supposed to let it cure for maybe five days, maybe two weeks, maybe two months. Here at the Soy Girls and in the life of an average person, you know, this is our first step into it. We're just gonna do what we can, and that means soaking it once. Then I'm gonna put it on a rinse cycle in my washing machine. And then instead of letting it air dry and cure for five weeks, I'm just gonna put it in the dryer. Okay, so I have my masks here and they're dry and although I literally just dried them, I know for sure that the one constant across all of the research I did was that you want your product or fabric to be wet wet, wet, wet when you go to diet. So I just cured them by drying them. This is, I'm making this up. I'm gonna let them soak for like two hours and we can get started on the food. I'm really excited. I also had some extra linen left over from my DIY curtains. So I decided to throw that in as well. I know I didn't pre-treat this fabric, but I would love to have another example when I'm doing this dye process. We're gonna put this to the side for couple hours until our dye is ready for them. So I have all my pots prepped and ready. I have my onion skins, I have my avocado pits and peels, which were in the freezer. They're still a little green. When I was seeing other people do this, their skins turned brown, so I'm a little cautious about that. I have my red cabbage, which I am I think this is gonna be the best one, as well as the onions. And then I have my blackberries. I think the onion skins and red cabbage are ready to go in. I'm gonna chop up the pits of the avocado a little bit more, but the blackberries are also ready. So we're just gonna add our food scraps to each pot. One per pot, obviously. Don't mix the colors. And first we're gonna make a concentrated dye. So with our four in their pots, I'm now going to add some water. Now you just need enough to kind of like cover the vegetables and make sure that they're fully submerged. You don't want to do too much water because we're trying to make like a concentrated dye. We can add more water later once we've made the concentration. So I'm bringing my pots to a boil and once they have, I'm gonna reduce them to a low simmer and I'm gonna leave them for about two hours. My foot is so asleep and tingly. Um, I've just been sitting down doing some work, but these have been simmering for a couple hours now. And just look at these colors. 
Wow. This one though. Okay, Violet. So it is time to start our dyeing process. So what I'm gonna do now is strain out all of the vegetables and fruit plant bits, whatever, whatever they are. Now before I put the masks and fabric in the pots, I actually wanna do something really cool with the cabbage dye. Now cabbage dye has a pH balance as far as I understand. So if we add something basic such as baking soda or something acidic such as lime, it's going to change the color of it. Are you ready for magic? I'm not. This is a mess. Oh. So here's some of our red cabbage dye. It's such a beautiful purple. Now, I put a little bit more in here because I actually want to use this as a dye. So, here we go, science. Let's do some baking soda in here. Oh shoot, I did it backwards. <laughs> this is the color I wanted for the majority. Okay, hold on, I know how to solve that. <laughs> I thought that the baking soda would turn it pink and the lime would turn it teal, but it went the other way around. So, I'm actually just gonna add a little bit more from the one bowl into the other so that I have more of the teal because I actually wanna do some of the fabric in the teal. But then when we do the lime, it turns pink. Magic. Oh my God, it wasn't record. It wasn't recording. Okay, let me do that again. Wait, oh my God, can I turn it back? Hold on, hold on, hold on. If I put this in here, will it turn back? <gasps> oh. Guys, science is so cool. Okay, here's my purple red cabbage dye. Let me just add some, some lime. And it's pink. Unreal, unreal. Okay, enough with the science experiments. It is time to take my soaking pot of fabric and masks. And I'm just going to add them to my pots and then top up the water. And then we're gonna let them simmer for a couple of more hours and leave them overnight. My alarm just went off. I'm gonna remove this from the heat. Make sure that the masks are submerged and I'm gonna leave this overnight. And we're gonna wake up tomorrow and hopefully have some cute dyed things. It is the next day and it is the final day. It is time to see how these fabric dyes worked out. So, this is our onion skin dye. That is beautiful, a beautiful orange color. And let's see how the mask did. I'm gonna take them all out and then rinse them under cold water. <gasps> Ooh, that's pretty. I really hope that this color stays when I rinse it out and when I go ahead and continue to wash it as I use it. But first thoughts, super soaked. Also something to note, if your thread is not you know, a cellulose fiber, if it might be synthetic, then it's not gonna take the dye. So I was going into this assuming that the cord here and maybe even the thread would not turn out the color because they might have not been cotton, right? But we'll see if they stay when we wash it out. I feel like it might just wash out of the cord here. Okay, so next up we have our blackberry. Whoo, girl, these are pretty, pretty colors. Again, I have no idea if it'll stay, but they're pretty now. In my research, the blackberry might wash out to be gray, which sucks because it's a beautiful color, but I also knew that and I was like, I'd be down for like a gray color. This is the red cabbage. Now, that did not turn out cute. I don't even think it took any color. I don't know what happened with this red cabbage. I thought this one would be one of the better ones because it naturally has tannins in it, which that and the onion skins, it just makes it easier to, to take the dye, but apparently not. Ooh, okay, also it's like, if anything more blue-gray, then it is like purple. I mean, it's not white anymore. Okay, this one smells weird. 
And here's this bright pink mask, which I actually, I like this color maybe better. It's kind of more of like a purple, like toned down color now. So I'd be more likely to wear this mask now, but we'll see again if it holds the color. Last up, avocado skins. Okay, beautiful, beautiful color. So excited about this color. Similar to the onion skins, but it's different. It's like more pink. Oh girl, yes! I'm so happy. Avocado skin. Okay, and last but not least, this is just my tester of my red cabbage, but then I added a basic to turn it like a teal blue color. So this is like a blue. Yeah, it like kind of dyed it, but barely. I would not let anything I'm doing here stop you from trying because it's all like, it's just your own process. It's, it, it changes for everybody. Maybe it's just like my water, who knows? Who knows? Shall we rinse? I'm nervous, it's all just gonna wash out. So I cold rinsed the fabric and masks and put them in the dryer. Once all of my masks were dry, I took them out and I'm going to give them a press of the iron, just kind of like any DIY you do on fabric. You usually press it at the end just to seal it. And I don't know about you guys, but I definitely do not have a ironing board, so I always just use a towel and do it on my floor. But I was not gonna finish this episode without showing you guys what they would look like after a wash. So I put them back in the washing machine with my natural detergent, and these were the results once they were washed and dried. Our avocado mauve pink color turned out beautifully. The color lasted and I'm so surprised with how beautiful this color is and how well it shows up on this mask. The cabbage was honestly the, like I had the highest hopes for it and it fell the lowest. It literally did not adhere to the mask at all. I don't know what went on here. If you guys know if I did something wrong in this process, please let me know in the comments below because I have heard good things about dying with cabbage. And the pink mask I dyed with the cabbage obviously didn't really work out for me either. The blackberries I knew would probably not keep this gorgeous berry color and in the research that I did in the other videos, it looked like it would probably turn like a gray color, which I was totally prepared for, but it rinsed out well. When I did put it in the washer and took it out, it is kind of more of this like taupe color, which I am actually very excited by. I think that this will kind of like go with more of my outfits. So I'm sure a lot of people would be disappointed that the really rich berry color didn't stick, but I'm really excited about this like taupey beige color. And lastly, the onion skins are also such a beautiful color. I think that the avocado and the onion skins are just the clear winners here. It took so well to the fabric too, like you can even see the color in the linen. I'm just over the moon. The part I love most about the avocado and the onion is that it's the skins of it, so it really is true food scraps and food waste, which is just so mind-blowing that we can make these beautiful colors out of something that we were literally gonna throw in the compost, hopefully not garbage, but nature is freaking cool, guys. Science is freaking cool. I'm so excited that I tried out this video and these DIY techniques. If you guys try them out as well, I wanna know in the comments down below. I wanna know other food scraps or natural dyes that I should try. Bonus points if they're true food scraps. And let me know again about the cabbage because I'm like disappointed about that. Oh, also, this is our 10 year anniversary on YouTube. October is when we started our channel back in 2010. We have some exciting things coming up this month, so we'll see you there. If you like it, make sure you give it a like. If you love it, sub it. And I'll see you guys in our next video.